How are you? Can I please get the 12 piece nugget? This nugget? Yes, but can you give me the macaroni and cheese? Mm -hmm. And a sweet tea? Okay, you don't want the meal? Yeah, the meal with the 12 piece nuggets, yeah, but yeah. instead of the. Fries, you want mac and cheese? Yes. You said sweet tea? Yes, please. Okay, any sauce or condiment? Um, the garlic ranch. Okay. And then can I also get a small chicken noodle soup? That's it. We have a cup of chicken soup and then a 12 count nugget milk, mac and cheese for fries, sweet tea, ranch. It's going to be 13 dollars What's a good name to be ordered? Batista. Give me one second, y'all. <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a good one. How are you guys today? Hello, everybody. Can you guys hear me good? I know y'all probably was like, yeah, Pastora, we heard you putting in that order. You probably was like, where's my chicken nuggets, Pastora? I want some chicken nuggets too. <laughs> and some mac and cheese. I know I shouldn't even be eating that stuff, to be honest with you. But I don't know if it's connected to my, <laughs> is it connected to my, Um, I don't know. Let me just take this off. I hope it doesn't interfere with it or you guys don't start hearing me far away. But how is everybody doing today? God bless you, Miss Keisha. God bless you, Miss Gloria. God bless you guys so much on this precious day. I'm so excited. I just came out of the stores. I went to go get my luggage. Finally, I bought some luggage because, you know, you guys remember we were talking about going to Ecuador, you know, for that missions trip and to just go check everything out over there. But with the pandemic, thank you, Miss Keisha, um, with the pandemic, we, we were actually, we wanted to go, the plans was to go in July or August, but with the pandemic and everything and how this, there's like a Delta variant and then now there's like a Delta plus or something like that, we had to like put you know, a pause break on that. So we really not able to go, but I'm thankful because I got the luggage. I am ready. I'm going to go. Um, I, I got some for me and the girls. I'm going to try to go to some other stores and get some for me and the boy, so for the boys, for daddy and Jay, so that they can have their luggages ready to go whenever this thing is over. I know it feels like this pandemic is never going to be over, right? It feels like this is just, it, this, these viruses have just been with us way too long. But um, anywho, I wanted to talk talk to you guys. As you guys can see, today's topic is just something that the Lord was putting in my heart today is, you know, having a good heart could sometimes be a blessing and a curse. I don't know how many of you guys can relate to that, but, you know, I just wanted to inspire you guys today because God wants to do amazing things in our life, right? And I know that I'm always on here encouraging everybody and I'm always, you know, making sure that you guys are looking at the positives in everything. Thing, right? But there are just certain things that go on behind the scenes that I just don't know. I talk about things, but there are other things that I really don't touch on. But I, I really felt led by the Lord to talk about them today because I like to give people the inside scoop on what ministry really is like. I don't, at least for me, my ministry and the way I deal with things, it may not be the same way somebody else's ministry is. But all I can do is be honest and transparent with my situation situation and just hope and pray that my situation is a blessing to your life because I like to take negatives and always turn them into a positive. I'm not that type of person that just likes to take my negative and make it a negative for you. No, if you can learn something from my experience, amen. If you're not feeling my experience, amen. Either way is not a big deal, but at the end of the day, I kind of wanted to talk about, and I always talk about this situation when it comes to like, you know, dealing with fake people, because I just feel like when you are, you know, called by God and you are moving forward in what God told you to do, right? You're not out here in these streets trying to walk in other people's shadows. So when you are very much aware of who God created you to be, and you start to walk that thing out, right? The Bible says that we be dealing with principalities 
principalities. The Bible says that we be dealing with rulers of darkness. So there are certain type of, you know, negative vibes, negative energies that are going to always rise up against you to try to stop you from what you're doing or the enemy uses certain people around you in your circle to try to make you feel insecure. So my whole thing is when you in ministry, you're going to deal with people like that. And you may say to yourself, well, pastora, you know what? You know, why do we got to deal with things like that in ministry? You know, and I ask myself that too all the time. But then it goes down to the t- the um tears. You know, sometimes you're going to have the wheat and sometimes you're going to have the tears. You know, in life and in ministry, we always going to deal. God bless you, Pastor Anetta. We always going to deal with these negative Betty's. Batista, thank you so much. Have a good one, sweetie. You too. You know, we always going to deal with these people that are just so negative all the time. And I know you may say to yourself, well, I don't want to deal with those negative people. But guess what? I don't want to deal with those negative people either. If it was up to me, shoot, I lock them all in the room and I'll throw away the key. (laughs) Right? Because I don't, I just personally don't like negativity. Why? You know, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. I've seen enough negativity in my life. Negativity, I've already been through it. I've been through a lot of things. I've already had to experience, you know, a lot of things. And I, you know, it's my, it's a personal choice for me. Like when I'm out here in these streets doing what God called me to do, like it's a personal choice for me. Like it's my choice is my life. I choose to live my life in a positive light. I could, there are so many things and that could make me negative, but you know, at the end of the day, I got a good heart and I always see the best in people, even though my street side, I don't know if you guys been through this, right? You, cause you got, you could be street smart and book smart, right? Cause my street smarts be telling me, all the time that a certain person, I shouldn't trust them or I shouldn't be around them, right? But then it's like my pastora side would be like, no, you know, you a woman of God, you got to be an example, right? And you got to be there for them. But you're going to go through these moments again, like I said, with certain sisters in the church, individuals who are close to you on your on your way up as you, because we got to be moving somewhere. I feel like if you, if you say that Jesus, Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, like, yo, you got to be moving forward. Like, if you, there, you got to either be moving forward, or if you in a place of success, then you got to be helping other people move forward, because God is not going to give you so much success, he's not going to give you all these dones and talentos, and in English is dons and talents, to keep that to yourself. We are a part of the body, and we are all here to work together to encourage each other, right, Gloria, hermana, and to build each other up, so it's so hard already in these streets as a woman, like, as a woman, you already struggle in your marriage, as a woman, you already struggling to be a mom, you already struggling, you know, with your past, with things that you got deep down on the inside of you, so when I'm looking at the kingdom of God, and the way I envision the kingdom of God, I'm envisioning, right, Yvette, people in the kingdom of God building each other up, not tearing each other down. Things are not a competition, you know, and you're going to deal with these people in ministry where to them, everything is a competition. And if it's not a competition, they always trying to make it make you feel like you disqualified, like you're not qualified. So you got to deal with so much, you know, as a woman in ministry, you got to deal with so much as a, a woman, a believer that's just a woman in this modern time, you know, and this is not for us to be discouraged. This is not for us to, you know, feel down. Like, and we can have our moments where, yeah, we human, where we feel down about situations because we gave people more time in their life, in our life and in our circle than they should have. This is why, like, you know, like I said, when I have friends, I'm always very watchful. I watch their behavior. I watch them. Why? Because I want to know if you for me, I already been through enough stuff 
with people in my life where they come close to me only because something is beneficial for them or they come close to me only because you know they want to use me or you know spy on me and report back or or just be fake and phony and it's just like I don't know how many right I don't know how many of you guys you know have been there and felt that because you know if it was if I was in the flesh right and if I wasn't led by the spirit, like I was talking about with one of my friends earlier, right? If I was in the flesh all the time, I would literally break down and be like, you know what? Screw that. I'm not going to make friends with nobody else because I don't have a problem making friends. I go into every store. I talk to people. God has a grace upon my life where people just randomly talk to me without me having to talk to them. And, you know, I could go places and people, you know, they just flock to me in that way where they just open up and they just feel comfortable talking to me about their issues and their problems and and things that they're facing in their life and do I always you know like I said it having a good heart is a blessing and a curse I could be in Target I could be in TJ Maxx I could be in Burlington co-factory and I'll some girl just start talking to me like hey you like these shoes and I'll be like yeah girl they so cute and then from there we just start talking and you know like I said I I don't have, you know, a problem making friends and I don't have a problem keeping friends, right? Because I know who I am and I know what God is bringing. I know what God is using me to bring to the table. So I know, you know, who I am and, and I know my identity. Why? Because I stay in God's face. I stay in, you know, his presence. I'm continuously trying to, you know, grow with the Lord, right? I'm continuously, I look at my life. I look because, you know, in Christianity, you're always going to go through situations where you got to overcome. Everything is a test from the beginning of your Christianity, from the moment you you a baby believer and you be like, man, God, I love you. Um, I accept you into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Guess what? You're going to go through so many different challenges and so many different testing per periods where God is going to test who you are. He's going to test your abilities. He's going to test, you know, your testimony. He's going to test your intelligence, your mind, your heart. God is continuously testing us, right? And so is the enemy. So you're going to get bombarded. And if you got a good heart, I think it's going to be even more difficult for you the way it is for me at times, not all the time, but at times because you just could feel like, dag, I wasted so much time with this individual, right? Giving them my love, pouring into that person, right? just to at the end of the day be enemies and not even talk to each other <laughs> right but it happens so much like I'm just so used to it right it's, it's like I'm getting so used to it but it's like the enemy he will play with your mind and he will try to make you be like no that's why you need to just shut down you need to just stop trusting people you need to just don't make no more friends but that's what the enemy wants the enemy he uses certain individuals to try to break you down so that you can be put in that little funk where oh I'm like that be I'm I have an attitude because it's just cuz you don't know what I've been through you know those are walls that you start to build up now there's nothing wrong with guarding your heart the Bible says that all the time he'd be like yo guard your heart above all things right we guard the jewelry we guard the tablets we guard you know so many things but we don't want to always guard our heart and our heart is the most vulnerable at times because we're good people because we want because we have Christ in when you got Christ in us in you you see the best in people even though they grimy even though they got attitude issues even though you know they just full of sin they just their nature is sin like they love to indulge in like I'm just human like don't judge me like they just like to you know crap on everybody and talk crap about everybody and then they get mad they get offended when you try to be like you know, I don't really want to deal with you. <laughs> like, you're not my cup of tea, sis. Like, you know, because your negativity, your vibe, the fact that you have no filter, the fact that you have no wisdom, godly wisdom, and you let yourself be led by your flesh, it, you know, you hinder 
good relationships with people and you tarnish good people's reputation like you want to tarnish good people's reputation out of your own bitterness and your own jealousy and you think that by aligning yourself with people who were fake around them is helping your cause or is helping your case be built up to help you feel in your mental disgusting mind that somebody that's a boss somebody that's moving forward in the kingdom of God somebody who one day helped helped you out when you had nobody to help you, somebody who actually saw potential in you that your own family never saw in you, right? You wonder why sometimes doors are closed to you. You wonder why sometimes God doesn't move in your life the way you expecting God to move in your life. Because in ministry, you got to deal with these type of individuals, these type of individuals that's like a mental case, like they need some medication, like they need to be locked up somewhere like this, like in the mental hospital, right? And you need to just lock the door and just let somebody else handle them. But at the end of the day, right, there were so many sicknesses in the Bible. There were so many mental issues that were in the Bible and the people that were connected to the spirit had to overcome these challenges. They had to overcome these issues. They had to overcome people murmuring about them and gossiping about them and and telling everybody, oh, you know, that person's, you know, calling is nothing. And, you know, you got to deal with people cursing you as a woman of God is difficult because like I said, you were already busy as it is as a mom. You're trying to be the best mom you could be. You're trying to have conversations with them. You know, you're trying to help them. You're trying to lead them. You're trying to guide them. Make sure they got their drawers clean that day. Like you're trying to make sure they took a bath. They did their thing. They brushed their teeth. You know, being a mom it comes with the responsibilities that carry weight on a woman, you know? So then when you, you, you combine that with ministry work, you combine that with being a wife, you combine that with, with being a, a counselor to people and being a, a good friend to people, being a good sister in Christ in the faith, right? It can be it's some people, this, this kind of ministry, it will make you or break you. It will show you what you really about and it will test your faith to make you be like, you know what? I really don't want to be in ministry. Like what for? Like, you know, some people really, I feel like have had those mental breakdowns when they, you know, and I know that is the enemy. So this is why I like to be transparent with you guys. I can't tell you exactly like, yo, all right, let me break it down to you guys. This is what I'm seeing. This is what I'm dealing with. I'm dealing with this person and that person. I can't break it down to you guys like that, you know, over a live, but it is a lot of work, Keisha. It is right. Another, it is over overwhelming sometimes, but I want to remind you guys, because this is something I know that you guys are going to get a breakthrough with this, with this video, because this is what the Lord was showing me, right? Even as I made this, the single, and I'm still working on it. Like I said, I'm dropping this single. I'm going to be dropping my three other singles. I noticed even throughout this process where there were many people that are happy for me, congratulating me, you know, messaging me and telling me, wow, sis, I seen you talk about this for three three years, years, I've been seeing you always talking about it. And I know that you've been handling your business at home, handling things in the ministry. But you know what? I'm so thankful that regardless of everything you went through, you didn't give up on your dreams. You're walking and you're calling and what God called you to do. And you know what? I'm so proud of you. I wish you all the success in the world, right? Because when you are a successful person, you're going to keep going higher, but it's in the kingdom. It's to help other people as well. It's not just for you to be successful. I'm already, if you really think about it, I'm already successful. I got a beautiful house. I got the truck of the year. I have a, a, a beautiful ministry. You know, I, in my eyes or to other people's eyes, like, girl, you already made it. It's like, what do you want more? Like, what else do you want? <laughs> you know, but I'm ministry minded. I'm thinking about the kingdom. But as you see that many people are not happy for you and w- you're going to see people that are happy for you, but then you're going to wonder why other people so salty. You're going to wonder why all these other people, all of a sudden, as you're chasing your dream, as you're walking in your mission, as you're walking in what God called you to do, right? You wondering like, dad, why are you so salty? Like, why you got such a problem with me? Why you got so much anger, so much bitterness, so much resentment? Why do you feel the need to gossip with other people about me and yet smile in my face? Like, why do you, this is why I say the tears are amongst the people of God. The wolves are there amongst the people of God. And one of the things that the Lord was showing me, he was like, you need 
to you're I'm elevating you. And where I'm taking you, these demons and these warlocks, they're not gonna be able to handle it. They're not gonna be able to contain the greatness that I got on the inside that is on the inside of you. And even though they've been working against you, consistently doing brujeria against you, consistently lighting them altars and praying for doors to close for you and for your ministry to never flourish, the Lord, he allows certain things to happen and to allow people to or in darkness to feel like they got one up on you and they feel like, oh, you know what? She ain't going to make it because as long as I keep going and putting that 2000 on the altar so she can't make it because that's the type of ministry that I'm dealing. I'm the ministry that God got for me. The Lord already revealed to me like, yo, there are people that are putting top dollar because they jealous of you. They envious of you and your success because they know me in this town. They see me. They see how I move. You know, I can't even, you know, I remember you guys saw the big truck that we got. That was one truck. Truck. We ended up getting another one, a pickup truck. I can't even post things like that sometimes because people will literally like suffocate because they like, why she's so blessed and not me. And I like, I can't even like, you know, do my sometimes I, you know, because sometimes you don't want to throw yourself out there so much because they don't realize what things cost you. You pay a price to move forward and be successful. It's not only costing me every day working, doing these courses, every day working, trying to put this clothing company together working trying to do the album homeschooling the kids you know cleaning in the house like doing things in the church putting together the radio show in spanish in english now we're gonna launch it in spanish with another pastora from colombia and it's like there's a lot of work that's happening because we're busy for the kingdom of god so like i said when you're dealing with these individuals that are just so hateful and so jealous the lord was showing me there is gonna come like there is gonna be such a, a big release that is going to happen over your life and I need you to be prepared I need you to not get frustrated because I'm revealing people's hearts to you so that when you get to those moments they can't tarnish your reputation because if they trying to tarnish your reputation now and you ain't even there yet and you on your way I'm trying to help you as my daughter and I'm trying to protect you and I'm trying to show you some things and open up your mind so that you can have more wisdom so you can have more understanding and what you need to do this is what the Lord revealed to me. He was like, you need to start praying for your enemies because when they are cursing you in their mind, right? When there is a thought that goes into their mind, then it goes into their heart and then it comes out of their mouth because out of the mouth proceeded the things that are in the heart. So when they think they speaking about Patora Janice in a, in a, in a, men, first it starts up here. You start thinking negative about me here, then it is already here. And if you didn't work on it and say, you know what, I'm going to take those thoughts captive because she's a woman of God. She been there for me. When I needed her to be there for me, she was there for me. When I needed a shoulder to cry on, she was there for me. So I'm not going to go and entertain people who are speaking negatively about her because I can see from my eyes I got, because this is the problem in the kingdom of God. Even I wonder, I'm like, why are people so blind? Why they can't, why would they rather associate with a nobody instead of associating with somebody that's moving forward and is a firecracker for the king of God, for the king of for the king of glory, for Jesus Christ, right? For the kingdom. So, you know, the Lord, he had me realize misery loves company. People who are the tares, they're going to they gonna flock with the tares. People who are wolves, they're going to flock with the wolves. So there's nothing that we can do. No matter what, you want to look at a wolf and you want to say, you know what? You a sheep. You could be a sheep. You don't got to be the way you are. You can, I see you, there's greatness, but they don't believe in the greatness that, they, that you see because you kind hearted, you got a good heart. That's why I said sometimes it could be a blessing and a curse because the wolf just wants to be angry and bite your little sheep head off. That's how they do. And you looking at the situation, right? The spirit of jealousy. Yes, it's terrible, Pastor Anetta. It is. It's so it's so terrible. And this is what we're this. And I'm telling you guys this because you're in the body of Christ. You're in the kingdom of God. If you're moving forward in a way where the enemy is intimidated, oh, he's going to start throwing things your way. So, so he's, he wants to be like, yo, make her give up, make her question her calling, make her fill her mind with insecurities, make her not believe in herself, make her, you know, go crazy, make her relationship crumble, make her family 
shambled to the ground. So this is what the enemy does out of his jealousy because God made us in the likeness of his image. But also you got these haters, right? You got these jealous people, these envious people that also want to be down with, with, with Christ. They want to be down in the body of Christ, but they can't get over the fact that you are an instrument that is used by God. So they get jealous when they see you being an instrument and out here in these streets helping people move forward. And they say, you know what, everybody, why does everybody got to love them? Because they moving forward. You know what? Let me go and help them move forward too. And there's nothing wrong with you looking at somebody, right? Who's helping people move forward, right? It's nothing wrong with you wanting to be like that because you seeing them and they inspiring you. And that's what Paul said. Let my walk inspire you. Let me help you be somebody. But the problem is with these wolves and with these tears is that they will see you moving people forward and they and they get because they jealous they're like you know what get the hell out the way because now i'm gonna step over you because you don't even matter no more you ain't nobody so now because i know how to do what you do i can do what you do and i can do it better so move out the way that's the problem where women of god don't know how to work together and they intimidated by another woman's growth they intimidated by another woman's calling so they try to imitate what she's doing but in the process, they want to bury you so that nobody can see your glory, right? The glory that God put over your life and they can only see their glory. See me, look at what I'm doing and everything that you got, you imitating it from somebody else who you want to bury in the process of your come up. So to come up, you need them. You needed them to come up. They was good for you in that moment when you needed them for the come up. But now that you got everything you feel that you needed from that person, now they no longer good enough so now you know you can talk about them now you can because this is why I always say people can talk all the crap but pictures don't lie when you look at people you don't you can see me with mad taking mad pictures right you know, with people and you may be, you could see me cool with them, but guess what? I know in my heart because of what I've been through, I may not be cool with them a year from now, two years from now, seven months from now. Why? Because people's hearts are wicked. They are literally wicked. So I'm not, I made the choice to not stop. I can't stop growing because of them, but I got to be obedient to what God said. So God was showing me again, a second time I need to get, get into that point, right? So the, what the Lord was showing me, he was like, you need to start praying for your enemies because, you know, the fountain in your life is about to burst. The blessings, you think that this is it. Like, you think, like, because everybody else is like, dag, like, God, you blessed her enough. Like, think about me. Like, give me, give me my blessings. Like, she already got the house. She already got the husband. She already got the good kids. She already got the two trucks of the year. God, where's my, why you keep blessing her? Because the problem is that people don't understand. When you're not active and you're not working in the kingdom of God, God is going going to take your blessings and he's going to keep giving them to people like me who are willing to work for it, who willing to work. You don't want to work for the kingdom of God. <clears throat> That's fine. God is not going to force you, but there are many people like me who God is already blessed and he's going to keep blessing them because they able, amen, to move forward for the kingdom of God and move forward, amen, and wreck, you know, wreck the, the gates of hell because they focus on the kingdom. They not focus on friendships. They not focus on feelings. They're not focused on emotions. They're focused on being a blessing to other people, bringing other people from insecurity to security, bringing people from you or nobody to believing they somebody, bringing people who didn't know Jesus and were lost to here. This is who Jesus is. I, you don't need to be lost no more here's your identity. This is who you are. This is who you were created to be. So people, they have a problem with that. And the Lord was revealing to me. He was like, you need to start praying so fervently for your enemies. He was like, you need to spend at least an hour or an hour and a half of your day praying for your enemies. And you know what that's going to do? The Lord was revealing to me because the curses that they throwing on you in the towns with other people, right? The, 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 the fact that they trying to tarnish your reputation 
protection in these streets, right? The fact that they out there, you know, they speaking it into the atmosphere. They speaking like, oh, she's nobody. And all oh, those doors are going to close. And oh, she ain't going to. The Lord was like, you need to be praying. You need to be prayed up more. And you need to start, you know, demolishing those thoughts of your enemies. This is why he says, pray for your enemies, right? Pray for those that persecute against you. When you praying for them, you're like, Lord, you know what? You got a plan for me. God, I know that you're going to do this in my life. I know you're going to do great things in my life. But guess what, Lord? There are, and name them by name. Say, yo, God, there's this person that feels this way about me. This is why you got discernment. The discernment is so that you can use it. The Lord will show you people's intentions and people's hearts so that you can pray for them in those moments of your prayer time. So you can be, because the moment you, basically, if you don't pray, the Lord was showing me, if you don't pray against them, if you don't bless them, you are going to detain what I want to do for you because the faster your blessings are going to come is the faster you're willing to pray for your enemies. You don't hate them, but you got to understand that the good heart that I gave you is so that you can pray for them, is so that you can break the bondage of Satan, that the, the bondages and the wickedness that Satan has over their life. So Satan has claws on these people. He has their mind bounded. He has their minds polluted, right? With negativity against the children of God, against those that carry light, against those. That's why the Bible says, what fellowship can light have with darkness? That's why you will see people in the kingdom of God that one moment they friends and the next day not. You'd be like, how can two powerhouses all of a sudden not be friends? How can two people that are going hard for the kingdom of God or that love Jesus so much all of a sudden break and not have a good relationship. It is because all of what's inside their heart. If Satan enters into their heart and they wasn't watchful and they wasn't protective of their calling, of their ministry, of what God gave them, what's going to happen is that they're going to go downhill and they're not going to see eye to eye, right, with what the kingdom of God is doing. They And they're going to be a hindrance. Even though they say they love God, they're being a hindrance to somebody else by cursing them and trying to delay God's blessing, God's promise, because they want to see the will of God being first fulfilled in their life so that then they can bless you, right? Because they think they want you to, to be blessed, but they just don't want you to be blessed more than them. They want you to move forward, but they just don't want you to move forward more than them. So this is why we need to, again, go back to the basics, pray for our enemies, pray for those that persecute us, pray for those that are are speaking lies against us, but use the word and say, God, your word says that blessed are those that persecute us. God, I'm being persecuted from the left. I'm being persecuted from the right. I'm being, you know, persecuted by this person, that person. And you bring them to the throne so that you can let God handle it and your heart can be clean right? Can I get an amen, somebody? So we can be clean and so that you can be able to move forward in what God is telling you to do. But if you move, if you think that you're going to move forward and you're going to skip the part of praying for your enemies and you're going to skip that part where God is going to, ex, you know, expect more of you in your prayer life. And he's going to, he's going to ask you, pray for your mother-in-law, pray for your sister-in-law, pray for those wicked people, all those wicked people that curse you, that want to see you in the dirt that hurt you, that rejected you, all those people, they need to be put to the cross. They need to be taken to the cross every day in your prayer life. You need to get a notebook. This is what the Lord was revealing to me. And this is going to be a blessing for many of you because I know that I'm going to start doing it on a deeper level, especially with the inner circle mentorship that I'm doing now that I'm about to launch. Cause I already told some of you guys, I don't know if you guys heard, but I'm not going to do the Friday videos no more. They're going to be on the mentorship in the inner circle. Circle. I'm going to do it privately and it's going to be, it's going to be a war room where certain women are going to have access to that war room and they're going to, we're going to be power praying. So the Lord was revealing that to me. He was like, you're going to get up you know, and you're going to turn that camera on and you're going to start praying for your enemies. And then the girls that come in there, they're going to start telling you, Pastora, let's pray for my enemies. And we're going to sit there and we're going to have these moments of fire where the Lord is going to just rain down over our lives because we are doing the will of God. And it's, it's, it's sad. We got to use Facebook because some people work, some people not able to come and congregate in the church, different towns, different cities, different things going on. But we're going to still do it for the glory of God, you know, through through the private 
and destroying evil altars mentorship and we are going to move forward for the kingdom of god and we're not going to let these demonic demons we're not going to let satan we're not going to let fake friends um you know enemies frenemies we're not going to let none of them stop us these wolves these pharisees these religious haters we're not going to let none of them stop us but we are going to move forward and continue having a good heart and be kind-hearted and just allow the lord to continue developing a stronger the sermon in us to the to the point where he's making us like you know spiritual warriors armors of god like we're going to be walking around suited and booted and just filled with the fire of god and you know we're going to be able to do powerful things because those that are that love god the bible says that all things work together for the good of those that who that love the lord so as long as we love the lord as long as we be we keep being transparent and be who god called us to be we're going to be thankful for those that came into our lives with a good intention and we also going to be thankful for those that the lord removed from our lives that came with bad intentions so you know in this season i what do i want you to take from this video pray for your enemies Thank God for the people he brought into your life and thank God for the people that he's removing out of your life. Continue being a good person. Continue letting your light shine. Even if it's pissing these people off, let your light shine, okay? Don't feel bad about the blessings. Don't feel bad because God is gonna move in your favor. Don't feel bad about these haters. Put your, the music on, put your little hater blockers on and let them keep talking all their junk because at the end of the day, that's all they know how to do is talk junk they not real they're not real today they wasn't real yesterday and they're not gonna be real tomorrow and they're not gonna be able to sit in your table of glory and that's why the bible says I'm going to prepare a table, believe this, man or woman of God that is, is listening to me right now, because God is not doing this by coincidence. God is going to prepare a table for us in the presence of our enemies, and they're going to have no choice. They could think that they got one up on us, two up on us, three, four, five up on us. They're not going to be able to prosper because the Lord, they're going to have to go through your table. They're going to have to pass through your table on their way up. Up. And no matter how many times they try to push you to the side and disqualify you with God, he always reminds us that it's not happening like that. Those who God calls, he will have their back. He is not going to leave them nor forsake them. So they either going to get with God's program or they're going to continue, you know, being, they, they better pray that their house don't crumble to the floor and that the Lord don't swallow them up. Because when you get into the way, in the way of what God is doing, God is not the same way. We don't like people getting in the way of our children's future god is the same way you're not gonna stop my child from being blessed you're not gonna stop you're not gonna mess up my child's reputation i god will take our enemies and he's gonna handle them for us in the mighty name of jesus amen so i love you guys i pray that today's video was a blessing over your life i'm about to eat these chicken nuggets i'm about to eat this mashed potatoes mac and cheese i'm about to go ham on this chick-fil-a that I just got and I'm going to enjoy my day, continue getting my luggage and just thank the Lord for, like I said, I'm, I'm just going to thank the Lord. I'm going to listen to my preachings and I'm going to shake the dust off my shoulders and I'm just going to continue looking forward to the singles that are going to be coming out and all these other exciting things. And I'm going to thank the Lord for all the people that he's bringing into my life, all the people that have been supporting me, having my back since day one. I love you guys so much. I'm so thankful for your support because many times when I wanted to give up, you guys kept pushing me, go harder. I believe in you, go harder. And this is, this is the reason why I want to continue giving back because I know that there's other women that God is using me to tell them, give, don't give up, keep pushing, keep going harder for the Lord, because what you guys sowed in me, I'm going to continue sowing into other people. And that's what it's about. If you can't help other women build up, don't expect God to give you a blessing because if you end this for the wrong reasons and the wrong motives and you trying to be a hindrance to God and you in this to tear people down let me tell you something don't ever celebrate that don't ever sit with people who celebrate other people's downfalls because the same way they laughing with you he he ha ha celebrating somebody else's downfall boo boo they're gonna be the same one celebrating your downfall when you because you think you friends with them let me tell you something the enemy he he has no loyalty okay so don't ever expect no loyalty from nobody that's not God and people who are God fearing okay because it's not going to happen like that. But if you like this video, give it a like, share it. If you're watching the replay, hashtag I'm watching the replay. Let me
me know who you are, if you're connected, if it's your first time watching this video. And if you want more content like this, definitely go to my um YouTube page, Pastora Janice Batista. I got mad videos over there. And if you want to find out more about our ministry, go to www.cdrgreensboro.com and just continue moving forward and going hard for the kingdom of God, okay? I love you. Share this video so someone else can be blessed by it. Bendiciones. And thank you also. I think it was Miss Gina that sent her offering in. Thank you guys so much for always blessing our ministry. I love you guys so very much. I bless bless you. I bless your seeds. I bless your offerings. I thank you guys because you're helping us move forward for the kingdom of God and what God called us to do. So I love you guys and I bless you guys. Bendiciones.